uh, actors uh, between uh, um, actors connected by some kind of relationships, some, some kind of ties. And if I had to summarize a very complex area like social network analysis in uh, like a couple of minutes, uh, I would say that uh, the main idea behind uh, this discipline is that we start from some kind of social system <coughs> and then we try to identify these actors, the ones that are relevant for our analysis, for our uh, objectives. Then we try to identify these relationships between them, like people that work together or uh, people that communicate together, terrorists that communicate together. And uh, we made uh, an abstract model, so we represent these nodes and relationships with some kind of uh, uh, graph. And then we keep this graph, we produce this abstraction, and we try to use it uh, to understand, uh, to study and measure some structural uh, features of this system. Uh, this is more or less uh, everything that I'm going to say about social network analysis. But, but you can see that like, uh, uh, this is a very uh, powerful tool because just by doing something like that, this is of course uh, like a fake example, but to give you an idea, uh, then you can uh, like, uh, start from that very complex context, a very complex situation made of a lot of people, and just uh, realize that, for example, there can be groups of users, group, groups of actors that get together and uh, for some kind of uh, uh, tight social structures. Uh, this can be useful, for example, in marketing if you want to target uh, some specific groups of individuals. And, uh, and uh, you can also, for example, uh, see that there are some specific users that have uh, some important role in, uh, for example, the diffusion of information in uh, social networks. So here you can see that uh, to pass uh, information from these actors to these other actors here, they have to pass through this individual. And so this has like, a very important role that can be measured mathematically. You can like, put a number out of that saying that uh, uh, this is important, uh, this is a uh, in between two different clusters, and so it's important in uh, uh, having the potential of stopping some information or facilitating information flows. And this has, of course, also many applications because uh, if you want that people know about uh, your ideas, and know about your products, uh, well, these measures can tell you uh, which users are important in a social system, like uh, on Facebook, which are the ones that should uh, say something uh, so that this information spreads and uh, reach many other users. Let's see just uh, some historical. So this is how it was like, uh, so it, it's a whole discipline, so this is uh, 1934 when people more or less say that the discipline was uh, born and this is some handwriting of uh, the same uh, fake example that I, I showed before so this is uh, by Moreno that is by many people uh, like uh, indicating that the founder of this area and you can see, maybe you can't see, but there are all these small dots here and then there are these connections, there are these communities so this is like something for real uh, with respect to the example that I, I presented before Why has this been so successful? Because it's simple and it's general. So in fact, uh, starting from social network analysis, people have uh, developed ways to analyze the networks in general. Uh, so you can uh, think of these uh, not as human beings, but as, for example, uh, computers, and study the structure of the network of computers. You can think of these as proteins, you can think uh, interacting uh, with each other, you can think of these uh, as uh, any kind of entities that you can connect. And this, at the same time, has uh, determined uh, the success of this discipline, but, has also, but also represents uh, one uh, of the main drawbacks, the main problems that people are just discussing recently, have been discussing recently. And the fact is that, of course, uh, like uh, this scenario here, is very far from our starting point. So, this was the system that we, were, we wanted to study. These are like human beings, they are not. Uh, like proteins, or they are not the viruses, or whatever. Uh, so the main question is, uh, what, what do we lose uh, when we go from this scenario to this? We know what we get, uh, like uh, the advantage, but like, uh, would it be better to know the details about this person here? Like, probably as a name, and some age, and nationality. So, the main question here, uh, that I'm going to discuss is what do we lose when we take this very complex system and we make a 
very simple abstraction. Uh, to answer this question, uh, so the plan is the following. I'm, I'm first going to present some examples, some case studies, where we start from uh, traditional network analysis. So we start from these simple models, and we, uh, we see what uh, happens, what additional information we can get out of the system if we start considering some richer information about uh, who the individuals are or what they are saying. And, uh, and the next step uh, will be to focus on one specific way of providing a richer model, that is uh, this uh, uh, concept of multiple networks. So let, let me try to, I try to choose some examples that uh, I think are very, very important and examples where there have been, uh, there have been a lot of studies. So first of all, information propagation. This is one of the main reasons why we study social networks, because we want to understand how I can say something that reach uh, him or her or other people. Uh, because it has a big potential in marketing, in a, a political system, and uh, um, these systems like Facebook, Twitter, etc. have proved to be extremely fast uh, uh, media. So whenever something happens, like there is some kind of natural disaster, a catastrophe, or some uh, VIP, some very important person dies or whatever, uh, these systems can propagate this information very fast. And so people have tried to study what are the, the parameters, what are the, like, the the setting, the dynamics, the, the, the things that influence this process. Why some pieces of information spread a lot, some others not. And these would be the, like the starting point that we can get by using just a simple uh, graph model. This is some real data. Uh, it's taken from uh, uh, one of the many cases when uh, someone at some point, a very well known in the social network, like in the offline world, uh, died. And this network here represents the relationship, the, the effect, the, uh, the messages, the, the flows of information that happen in a specific social system that is called a friend feed. That you can think uh, like something very similar to Facebook. In fact, it was uh, acquired by Facebook in uh, 2009. Uh, to understand what this is about, so these are users of the system. And these connections here show that uh, there has been a flow of information. So basically, this user here has learned uh, about this news, uh, so the fact that uh, a specific individual had died from this user here, and then these has learned from that, and so on. Already keeping only this representation of the diffusion process of the information, we can get a lot of insights. So this is already very interesting, because we see that the, like, the real information doesn't uh, uh, propagate in a random way, but there are clearly identifiable structures that must have some meaning. But if we start uh, considering, for example, the content of the information, so here we just see, like, you know, a connection. But what were people saying here? So does this have any impact on, on then uh, the development of the structure? Well, let's see that. This person here said that Mike is the name of the person who died. Mike passed away. So this was the, like, uh, his post on this uh, system. And here you can see that this is like uh, an explicit attempt to propagate some information. So when I go there and I say, guys, this uh, Mike uh, has uh, died, uh, what I'm trying to do is just to reach other people with this piece of information. And for this specific kind of message of post, uh, we can see that there are some kind of uh, features. So first of all, time is very relevant, because there were many people saying that. But the only uh, message of this kind originating uh, a long chain of propagation was the first one. Why? Because immediately there was a sudden burst. Everyone was seeing that. The propagation is very fast here. So everyone was replying to that message. And at some point, uh, people knew. They just knew. And so, if like 10 minutes later, someone went there and say, oh, I have some news, like people already knew, and uh, they couldn't even uh, reply to that, because that was not something new. At the same time, uh, even if there are a lot of people that immediately comment on that, 
uh, then uh, this type of message usually generates some very short propagation in time. Uh, why? Because uh, they just give information. They, they don't want to do anything else. And so when I say, oh, Mike passed away, and someone else goes there and say, okay, that's it. <laughs> no? Thank you. <laughs> What happens here? If we send these messages, <laughs> you can see that these are of a very different kind. How has television changed? So this guy here was a TV host, a very famous TV host. And you can see that here, first of all, there is still a propagation of information because people go there, see how has television changed, and they say, Television change, what happened? Why are you asking it? So they are learning that something has happened. Uh, but still, there is no implicit aim of propagating anything. These people just want to discuss something. And uh, these kind of uh, like chat uh, or chatting messages depend more on topic than on time. So we had uh, here in this specific example some of these during uh, along this change of propagation that there were messages posted like even two days later. But of course, time is no longer relevant there. You know, I mean, it's not a matter of giving the news, it's a matter of giving some new idea, new discussion. So there the topic is important. And of course, like, there is less emotional content here associated. So less people were just, uh, uh, like here, uh, Mike passed away. No, 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 no. Okay. Like here, how has television changed? Yeah, people just think, okay. no, yeah, maybe, you know. So, like, there was, a, in, in this case, these messages are associated to a, like, a less bursty behavior, but they may last longer, because, of course, people then can go on. Well, I think that, well, no, I don't agree, well, but, you know, there can be some kind of conversation. And finally, can you guess what these are? So, these are you know, users that go there, say something, and, uh, like, nothing happens. If you use like Facebook or this kind of social media systems, you must be very familiar with this. Okay. Yeah, you are. So whenever something dies, there is a lot of people just saying, rest in peace. Oh my god. Ah, ah, forget about it. Okay? And uh, this is the third kind of message that is quite relevant and important, I think, because uh, no attempt to propagate any information. They're not saying Mike passed away. They know that people know. They just say very expressing that this we call the morning ritual of the networked uh, audience. They don't have any implicit uh, propagation uh, uh, like uh, intention. They just want to do something. It's a kind of ritual, a social ritual. But still, this is important in what we call a social technical system. Why? Because. Uh, uh, this kind of information uh, is propagated and uh, access and gets to other people through an interface like this. And uh, an interface like this uh, is a place where normally people when go, they see this. Sometimes they go a little bit down, but normally they see just the information that has been produced in that specific instance. There are a lot of studies on like uh, uh, search engines, for example, that people like basically never go to the second page of Google. Never to repent, of course. And so you can see that all of these rest in peace messages. So they reactivate the information. So even if someone has not uh, like seen that, at some point they will see these rest in peace information. They will say, okay, oh, I, I wasn't there, but I guess he said something like that. I don't know if this uh, matches your experience. If like it happened to you that at some point you went there, you went there and you saw uh, like, oh, damn, rest in peace. And then from that you realize that something has happened. I don't know. To me, it happened quite frequently. Yes? Hmm. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't really get that. Uh, just think of that. You are, you are not learning the information because someone wanted to tell it, It's just the result of an implicit uh, social report uh, mediated by a platform. So, this presentation, the core will be on a specific model, so let me just go on to the second, the last example that I want to give to try to understand what we can get more when, like, with respect to our understanding of these systems when we introduce these additional features. So, one thing is propagation of information, another very important thing is the information extraction. So, this is, of course, very relevant. So, I'm a businessman, I want to know 
how my brands are going on, uh, are doing on Twitter. What are people saying? Are they happy? They are not happy? In fact, this specific uh, uh, something related to this uh, uh, case study we developed for Telecom Italia, that is a telecommunication company in Italy, that bought the developer system to do some brand monitoring. So the applications of these are very, like, very clear. And uh, if you take Twitter, so this is just a screenshot of my Twitter uh, page, uh, you can look for information, like if you write some random name here, and you get a set of tweets sorted by times, even if uh, yeah, something can happen here, but this is more or less what you get. And the main idea is that uh, this can be useful if you want to answer the question what's happening right now about this keyword. Uh, but you may have some more uh, complex questions that maybe can involve also all this knowledge of like uh, the fact that uh, there are uh, people talking to each other. So you may be interested in getting this single tweet because it contains a keyword, uh, but uh, uh, another more advanced way of getting information out of these systems is not just to get the tweets, but it's to get uh, uh, groups of people, possibly relevant people, that are talking together about some common topic uh, that is of your interest and that is also of their interest. So this is kind of form of uh, information extraction that takes care and tries to, uh, to exploit uh, all the, you know, the social details, the fact that uh, there is a conversation going on online. So let me just tell you again that this is not what I'm going to talk about in the details, this is just a pretext to understand uh, the fact again that uh, by considering a lot of additional information we can get uh, richer information when we do the analysis. But let me just tell you briefly what, uh, what is this uh, like conversation retrieval, how, how it works. So whenever we go online, like on Twitter, we want to get information, and then of course uh, we can use uh, as a, like, a traditional information retrieval system the relevance of the text. So we want to get those pieces of information that contain some keywords because we are interested in soccer or politics or whatever. But then here we use a number of other uh, parameters to understand, to rank our information and to check, uh, uh, to decide which information is more relevant than others. Uh, for example, uh, if the users that are talking are popular in the network, that can be more interesting. Uh, of course, time-related aspects. If the messages are popular also, because you know that on these systems like on Twitter you can say that one specific message is important, you retweet it, so that's relevant. So you can use this information. <coughs> you can use information on where the things are happening and also some kind of non-verbal signals. This is quite important, I think, because uh, uh, when I talk, uh, I normally uh, convey most of the information through uh, non-verbal signals, not through my words. Especially me as an Italian, so I tend to, <laughs> to have these like, body gestures, maybe in the years it's like, diminishing, but still something sometimes goes up. No? Okay. And, uh, <laughs> So, and this information is also present there because it's a different kind of information. You cannot see if there is like an Italian learning like that while it's typing on Twitter. But you can see, for example, that I say something, and uh, if uh, the topic is very like interesting and there is some kind of emotional uh, interest there, people will not just wait two days before replying. So it's like I'm in a coffee bar, I'm sitting there, and I'm talking about something. And if I say something that is very relevant, like I'm starting talking about politics in Italy now or whatever. Then the other people will not wait for me to finish even. They start to say, no, what the hell are you saying? No, yeah, I don't agree. Okay. So by checking also the, like, the frequencies, you can understand if there is something that at some point is very like, important for the users. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, I'm not showing the, the full video here, but like, this is the system developed, and, uh, and uh, you can see basically that uh, you can. Uh, ask some keywords, for some keywords, and what you get out of it uh, is no longer a set of tweets, uh, uh, but it's a set of uh, uh, conversations. So here you can click on these conversations and you can see that they, they are made of like set of uh, people, and you can see that uh, if I stop here in a second, uh, 
uh, these specific conversations was returned by the system uh, because uh, uh, there were very important and trusted uh, people talking. Like this is a message from Sky Sport. Do you have Sky in Poland? Yeah. No, 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 no. But you know what that, what that is. So yes. I can, uh, yeah. and, uh, and then this created a lot of uh, discussions. And so this is why the system would uh, prefer this information, say this is more relevant. This in particular was asking what was the best, who was the best player in the soccer match with the Italian youth, and everyone was saying, uh, measuring the referee. Uh, the best player of the match, the most uh, important in determining the final result. And uh, the thing that I want to, to, to show here, that again goes back to uh, the importance of uh, something that cannot be just stored in this uh, social graph, in this network, is the importance of uh, like this uh, uh, specific context where an algorithm goes. So here we have an algorithm with some parameters that says uh, how much it is important to identify, to determine the ranking of some piece of information, uh, the popularity of the users or the frequency or whatever. And uh, if we made an evaluation, and this is an evaluation that we made of the previous system, asking some people and, uh, and uh, taking some information from the web, uh, ranking it uh, through just Google, so using Google to rank it, and ranking it through this system trying to like, give more relevance to the messages containing popular individuals and more relevance to the, or more relevance to the messages containing like a very uh, like, tight discussion where people were just replying at the time uh, we could see that the users uh, had uh, like a clear preference for these uh, additional pieces of information uh, this is like the average score from 1 to 5 uh, with respect to the, the goodness the quality of the rankings that were produced by different systems. And there is a clear difference here. But the, import, the, the thing that I think is very relevant here is that if we take exactly the same piece of, of uh, the, exactly the same algorithm, but we just evaluate it on a different topic, and in particular instead of some international news, uh, we ask uh, about something that happened in Italy. Uh, that, um, so immediately the performance of the algorithm go very like down, and users prefer like clearly the results uh, uh, returned by Google. That makes no usage of all this kind of uh, like uh, frequency or popularity of the users in the social system, etc. This is the same algorithm. So why, why that? And the point is. Uh, like uh, that uh, it's a different cultural environment and, uh, and things work differently and also the algorithm work differently if you check uh, uh, the subset of Italian messages for example messages posted on, social net on this specific social network uh, <coughs> system by Italians the probability of getting an answer is uh, 10 times higher than the probability of getting an answer where people are writing English so you mean that here if you take this, all the information produced here you take someone saying something in English never say Oh, I would like to know if what you think of this, uh, like, uh, of this uh, fact Normally on average there will be someone else that goes there and says Ah, this is my opinion In English If you take a message in Britain in Italian uh, People will go there and will ask the same question in Italian Ah, allora, che è successo? Huh? And uh, on average they will get 10 answers because we talk more that's the fact it's how we do we, you know, we have probably lower social barriers we like to talk we, don't, we first talk then think this is what we usually do so of course the problem here we did a qualitative analysis we asked the users uh, why before you were preferring the system now you prefer Google and the answer was uh, because of the like the conversations uh, uh, retrieved by your system makes no sense at all they are irrelevant with respect to what we asked the problem was that people were starting talking we were asking I don't know, something about uh, the Italian president that died and of course people were starting saying oh he died, the poor guy yes and he came from that specific region by the way there is a very important soccer match in that region tomorrow and then people were starting talking about the soccer match and of course uh, like the users evaluating their saying. Uh, I want information about the president, not soccer match. And, uh, and this is why they prefer Google, that was just uh, 
preferring those uh, pieces of information, short, where they were just saying, president, whatever, died or whatever. Same algorithm, different social context. Third and last thing, and then I will move to the last part where I will focus on this introduced privilege, like multiple networks model, is uh, the same exact evaluation. So this is again exactly the same topic, uh, the same data, but asking a different set of users about the quality of the results, and in particular a set of users that were also active users in that specific platform from which we were extracting the data. So like this is the platform, it's called I don't know if this was friendship of Twitter, I think it was called friendly. In this example, we take some data, and we go to you, you are not a user there, and then which one do you prefer? And you will say something. The next evaluation shows the same thing, but just asking people that are active users there. And this is the result. Same algorithm, same data. And now, people start preferring this. It seems like random behavior. But it has a like, very clear meaning, no? So here when we ask people, we say, we ask, so why now you're saying that these are good? Uh, and they will say, well, you know, these pieces of these conversations here are not so focused on what I was looking for. But they still provide some information about that. But that information is provided by people that I know very well. Because uh, these people, this is uh, like uh, we're associating with uh, a ranking, a good relevance to when the important people inside that specific social network were involved. And the people active there knew that those were the, the guys to be trusted. And so they just get a different idea. And the motivation was very clear from the qualitative evaluation. Well, yeah, but this has been said by him. And, and everyone knows him here in this uh, social environment. So, so this must be relevant. So let me summarize this uh, first uh, uh, part that was uh, on purpose a little bit uh, long with respect to maybe the focus on uh, the models uh, but, uh, but I think that uh, it's very important because uh, uh, it gives uh, a clear idea, a clear like, uh, understanding that uh, these social technical systems where we are not just analyzing uh, nodes and edges but we are analyzing real people that have some background, some idea that say something, produce some specific content, and access this content through a specific uh, technological interfaces. There is much more. They are much more popular than these uh, like, uh, simple graphs that you can use. These simple graphs can, of course, be very useful to understand some structural uh, properties. But still, uh, if we reach these networks with additional information, the content, the time, uh, the language, we can get uh, something out of it that is much richer, I think. And this example that I've shown before had this uh, like aim of showing that we can really say something more or understand more what's happening. And uh, a specific way, and this leads me to the last part of the presentation uh, and uh, the one specific of multiple networks, a specific way of uh, enriching these uh, networks, because we can do that in many ways, no? We can consider the language, we can consider the content. One specific way of uh, developing, uh, sorry, of uh, defining uh, a more uh, like richer models is to consider that uh, whenever I say that there is a connection between me and Abbe, for example, that's not just uh, a connection, which is, you know, can be whatever, but uh, often uh, when we talk of real individuals, there are different ways of being connected. There are different kinds of relationships that we can have. One, yeah, so I can be calling with, some, with someone, I can get drunk with someone else, uh, I can get, uh, you know, this kind of different relationships. And if you want to push this even farther, it's just not just a matter of having different relationships. It's a matter of uh, having different networks. So basically, in our life, we participate in many different networks. Our working life network, uh, our friendship network, our Facebook network, our getting lunch with people network. And, uh, and we might even push this further and say that in the different networks we use different strategies to reach different audiences and we even like behave as different people. So we are kind of acting differently. And uh, this is something that has been known forever in the social sciences. So for example, Goffman was talking of this uh, uh, you 
human beings as uh, actors performing on different stages depending on the different audiences. So with my like, bosses uh, at the university, I would just be very, you know, not like maybe even if you have uh, like an overtone of my voice, but be very formal with them. But with my friends, I'm going to be more, you know. And uh, so the thing is, uh, we can use these models of interconnecting networks to give a better understanding, to try to have a better understanding of the role of an individual, like this specific node, that belongs to, the, to different networks. And this, by the way, is something that uh, was used before the development of the mathematical formalizations. This is a, a Renaissance Florence. Uh, this is a, a Lorenzo il Magnifico. He was a very important historical figure. And here you can see that in his history, for example, they've been doing analysis of this kind, like trying to understand uh, the figure of this important historical person um, by checking uh, the fact that this is the same person on an economic network, on a kinship network, on a political network, and trying to understand, to, to see that uh, like the power of this individual was not based on like, uh, his behavior on a single network, like the economic network, that was based on his uh, joint behavior in keeping all these different networks related to each other and connected. So this is not something, uh, like I would say, new per se, even if the mathematical formalizations are new. Because now, in some way I said that people in social sciences have always been aware of that, that you cannot just go there and say, oh, we have a connection, but they want really to understand what going on between us. Uh, the challenge is to bring this uh, to some kind of uh, uh, process that can be automated, where we can write software programs that uh, keep the systems and still are able to answer some uh, important questions, like for example, I take two individuals on the network, that would be these, and this you can see like this individual on these different networks, and I want to know what is the social distance between them, for example or what is their role, okay? And this is the main question that I'm trying to, uh, to work out now. When we talk of a single network, understanding the distance between the two nodes is very important, because uh, when, when I'm able to say that this is the fastest way to go from this node to that node, then based on that I can tell many additional things. I can tell about, for example, I was mentioning before, uh, the concept of being uh, like a facilitator of information uh, uh, spreading and that is very much based on the ability of computing path and distances and see when people stand there in the middle of the path that con con like, uh, uh, connects to different portions of the network, for example. So this is a very important uh, functionality on single networks, on traditional social network analysis. How can we do the same when we have three four or five networks. The plan here now is to try to present by example how we can do this, uh, one possible way of doing this, and then showing uh, some applications. This is something that is, I think, technically very interesting because uh, it has some computational aspects that are very much specific of this, uh, this problem. But uh, uh, the focus that I want to, go, to, to, to give here is on uh, how real in practice people that want to do real analysis can use uh, this kind of measure, this kind of uh, extended distance that spans, can span different networks. So I will just give you an intuition of the, of, of the, the definition of distance, and then, and then I will show real data what kind of output we get when we apply this algorithm. Let's say this is example. On Facebook, I am a friend uh, with someone that is called Codardus. In this case, uh, in traditional network analysis, I would say that our distance is one, because we are directly connected. Now, I assume that I also participate in a lunch network, the network of people with whom I, have, I eat the lunch normally, like regularly. And uh, I can see that I also regularly eat the lunch with Codardus. So we have two different kinds of relationships. So we start with a simple example. So the question is, what is the distance between me and Codardus when I'm using these two different networks? Of course, I can say this. This is an option. 
and I'm not saying that it's wrong in general, even if, uh, if I'm keeping like uh, 55 different social media and not just one, maybe there's a reason why I want to keep them distinct. And so maybe like just saying everything is the same and this as one may not be so accurate. But this is the way I think that we can do. Uh, you, if you say that the distance between me and Codardus is 1, of course you can also say that it's uh, 0.5 or square root of 2, I mean, that's the number, so you can more or less do whatever you want, depending on <coughs> the semantics that you give to these links. Or, and this is what we explore here, we can say that the distance between myself and Codardus is that I am a Facebook friend with Codardus and I regularly eat lunch with him. It seems an oversimplification, no? I mean, I'm just uh, repeating the same thing, but that's the point. I'm not uh, throwing uh, away any kind of information. The main question is, uh, may I use this to do some uh, automatic computation? <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but the main, thing, uh, the main thing in using this kind of definition is that these two are incomparable. If I'm a Facebook friend with Codabu, this is a completely different matter with regard to having lunch with him. This, Two things describe two completely different kinds of relationships that we don't really want to compare or to put together, to mix. They are two different things, and to really understand our distance, social distance, I need to consider both, both of them. Second example to introduce this measure. So the, the previous one was quite you know, simple, like just a direct connection. So now, is the human, <coughs> this is becoming interesting now, so that I am a Facebook friend with someone with a Facebook friend with Virus, that is another guy. Of course, here I could say my distance with the two virus is true on a single network. And now, assume that I'm also a Facebook friend with someone who regularly eats lunch with virus. So, what is our social distance here? And, uh, and here, the thing uh, is that, uh, in some way, uh, I cannot really tell uh, the matter of the concept of distance is basically a concept of. Uh, most efficient way to go from one to the other. And the point is, what is the most efficient way, for example, here, to send uh, some piece of information to Virus? It depends. Because uh, if Facebook is the medium that these guys are using to, to, you know, to communicate, this is faster. So this would be the shortest distance, the shortest path. But if uh, it's by having lunch together that people just exchange information in that environment, well, so this is going to be the shortest path. So we can see okay, which one it is when we have this path that goes to different networks. And uh, the thing is, uh, and this is uh, like the, the bad news is, uh, well, so we are like flooded by a lot of information that, I mean, what, what are we doing? What, what an algorithm can do? The good news is that, anyway, even if these two are incomparable, uh, we can still uh, say something with respect to paths that go through different uh, networks and that are shorter than others. So why these two, I hope you, you see that like, one or the other could be shortest depending on the interpretation. Now consider this, I am a Facebook friend with someone who is lunch with someone, who is lunch with someone else who uh, works together with Virus. So this, uh, I'm telling you that is, uh, I'm like, suggesting that is uh, less efficient or longer than this. Because I mean, I can just go there and I have Facebook friend that has lunch, eats lunch with them. So it's not necessary to then ask him to go and eat lunch with someone else and then go there and then to the job place and maybe send a letter and this kind of thing. So this is just longer. And uh, even if here I'm not uh, giving like a formal definition, this is called the Pareto distance. So if you know about Pareto and uh, this work, uh, you would have already mind uh, the definition. Uh, and uh, we can say that these two distances here, that are both potentially shortest, uh, dominate or are more efficient or are shorter in general than these, uh, because basically in each possible network they take less, uh, like, uh, uh, shortest distances. So this is shorter on Facebook, this is shorter or equal on lunch, and so this is just uh, uh, strictly worse or equal in all possible networks that we are considering. The definition basically is based on this. So now the last thing that I would like to do 
is to see how we can use this. Of course, we can write an algorithm now that uh, checks uh, these uh, domination relationships and only keeps uh, these uh, uh, distances that can be shortest. By the way, uh, there are a lot of formal properties here. So if you take this definition that I'm not giving you, by the way, so let's see. But the definition corresponding to these examples, and uh, you use it on a single network, you get back to the traditional distance. So, like it's just a proper extension. And uh, if you take uh, two, three, or n networks, and uh, you take something that is considered shortest using this definition, uh, you can guarantee that there is some specific interpretation of the networks, like lunch is faster, <coughs> where this would be the fastest one. <coughs> Uh, so like, there are many formal properties that can tell you that this is something that makes sense, but what I want to do to conclude the, uh, the presentation, uh, uh, yeah, and of course like, when we have algorithms uh, involved, we can do scalability analysis and see what happens, and this is also very interesting because uh, this is a problem that is intractable in general, finding these uh, distances. But in practice it works uh, reasonably well. And uh, uh, what, what I want to do is to show how it looks like. So like assume that now you are no longer like computer scientist, in case you, you are, I don't know, like you. And then you just take a real data set. And these are uh, different networks happening in my previous work uh, environment. Working together, being friends, uh, having lunch together, being connected on Facebook, uh, and uh, co-authoring papers together. So this is a real system. I am this person here. By the way, this note here is me. Um, so let's see if we compute the distance between myself and uh, someone. Of course, the data is real, but uh, I, I have to anonymize it. So I replaced all the other people with uh, fictitious, uh, well, or more or less fictitious characters, let's say. So this would be one of my colleagues that I am calling Sidney now. But, 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 but the data is real. Uh, so <laughs> if we compute this distance, this algorithm, I would get this as a distance. Not one, not two, but just uh, you are directly connected on lunch, on Facebook, on friendship, uh, and uh, on the working network. You have direct connections everywhere. So there cannot be anything faster than this. So every other possible path uh, is just removed from the cloud. And here the interpretation is that, of course, uh, we see better, like uh, not, not, not just a number two or three, but we see that like this uh, is a real, a real close friend uh, that is connected through several kinds of different networks, and uh, so we have a very strong relationship that has also some kind of quality that we can check. Second example of three, the distance between myself and the Lionel. So you can see that now our distance is still one, in theory, because we are directly connected here, but if we check at the whole output of the algorithm, uh, we can see that, uh, well, our distance is one, we are very well connected. Thank you, and nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm sorry. You don't have time, yeah. I have a plane to catch. Yeah, see you next nice. time. Yeah, sure. And uh, here you can see that now we can see that uh, our distance is just, just one, but we have a very good connection with respect to like uh, leisure activities. But we are not really working together. So like this is a close friend but not a co-worker. And the last example is this. So now we take Celsius and we check the distance between myself and Celsius. And now we can see that very messy things start happening. Uh, in theory our distance is still one, if we just reduce to a number. We are directly connected. But uh, we are uh, um, whenever we go to things that are not work related, first of all you can see that uh, sometimes now I need to cross different networks to go from myself to him. I don't have any direct connection on Facebook, for example. Otherwise I would have a direct path there. It's not there, it's not in the result. So we are not uh, directly reachable uh, through our Facebook connections here. I need to swap, to do it swap. So this like increases our social distance. I need to go to, through different uh, environments and kinds of networks to getting connected to this person. And here you can see that if I want to get through like the lunch network, I really need to pass a lot of steps, or I need again to, to jump and go through other networks. So you can see that not all co-workers are, are of course friends, and then you get like a very computable, because it's computer automatically, but still a rich 
uh, idea of what the separation between these two individuals. Um, so I think it, I would like to go to the conclusion. I think the time is more or less over, maybe two, three minutes, five. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, fine, it's fine. So, um, so, so the thing is that, uh, so this is the plan. So I've shown you that there is like this kind of a way of reaching network models to get more information out of it, and that we can still like uh, compute algorithms, etc. Uh, I would like just to mention uh, another very recent topic with respect to these uh, multiple network models. Uh, that is very important because, for example, to do all the scalability analysis of this algorithm, we needed some uh, synthetic data, and so we needed to, like, not just this data that was collected manually, but also to generate very large data sets with multiple networks. And so I'm just giving you a hint about uh, one other topic of research that is very, um, very popular now, but is very recent, like people started, I think, uh, more or less one year ago, working on this. So whenever you talk, uh, you consider one single <coughs> network, uh, there have been a lot of studies uh, explaining how these networks evolve in time, how they are generated, and basically the main idea is that uh, in time there are new users that are uh, like uh, joining the network uh, and, uh, and they create connections with existing nodes, for example. Uh, this is done using a very well-known model, the Barabali Alert model. You can use many others. And the main idea is that uh, in real systems, when I go on Facebook, for example, I do not really get connections to other people just because I meet them on Facebook, not just because of internal dynamics. The reality of the real world is that whenever I go somewhere, either I create connections because uh, I live in that system and so I see that someone is popular there or oh, all my friends are following this guy here on Twitter I'm also following him that's internal dynamics and it works like that but at the same time in many cases I would just create a connection because I'm already a friend of light or because I met this person on Pinterest I, I like his uh, uh, like, uh, board there and so I say okay, oh he's also here on Facebook so I also import this connection so basically now recently people are starting also understanding that or studying the fact that uh, when I have uh, systems on net an individual belonging to different networks and I want to study the evolution, I cannot just study the evolution of a single network but uh, I study the fact that uh, there are different networks and they evolve uh, in different times together and uh, these individuals should be the same in the different networks uh, and at some time some connections that uh, are created here are just created here because they exist somewhere else, and so there are these kind of uh, dependencies. And this is really very recent work, and there was uh, something in 2010, a paper that has not received uh, um, basically any attention so far, but it was very visionary, I think, even if it was very specific on one system. And then we have a list of recent works that have started, and there are others because they are coming out, so at least a couple of others, uh, just out on archives that are really trying to, to study these multiple evolutions. So let me conclude. What have we seen today? Uh, social network analysis, that was the general context, context uh, of the presentation, is a long-standing, you remember that drawing of the, in the 30s, and uh, a very successful discipline, with a lot of applications, a lot of people working on that, and applying it to very diverse um, uh, contexts. At the same time, when we move to complex systems like online social network, we want to do analysis there, um, then uh, we need some kind of richer models. Or if, if you don't want to use the word that we need, let's say that uh, if we have richer models, we can get much more information and much better understanding of what's happening. And this because of this uh, combination of social and technological aspects. The challenge is, of course, to find a compromise between being able to do something that is expressive so that can uh, show and represent this information. So I don't want to write like really just a uh, notes and connection. But at the same time, I also don't want to need to go there in person because uh, I really want to check the details. I want to be able also to, think, to have things that are computable. So they can run algorithms that can get out this information on my, uh, on my meetup. 
So, uh, we have seen basically a couple of ideas and suggestions on how to extend single graph based models with uh, some content. You remember, like, we started the examples of information extraction and propagation, and on multiple, using multiple network types to enable the extraction of, of this relevant hidden information. And this area is very recent and is very much in its infancy. There are a lot of people that uh, have been studying uh, these things. Uh, uh, one of the first groups, by the way, is uh, here in Kroslav. And together with uh, myself and other people in other parts of the world. And now I would say that not everyone is doing that, but uh, really in every conference on networks, you now will find like specialized sessions that try to work on these multiple models. So it's like a very, I think, practically relevant and uh, theoretically interesting topic. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> and of course, uh, I would be happy to answer questions or to hear your comments. So this tool which you showed is built by you and is it available online to, uh, to calculate this distance? Uh, no, so now it's just code that we have written and we are using. Uh, what we are trying to do now is, uh, you are maybe familiar with the iGraph uh, uh, library. It, it's a, li a library for transmission of social network analysis. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we are trying to incorporate these uh, and other algorithms there so that these things uh, become available in a, like, uh, in a framework. Because of course, if we just give this algorithm to someone, I mean, they are not without a platform. People, I mean, the code is there, but it's, it's basically useless because people could go just there and compute distances and then. So, so the idea is that uh, we are trying to do these extensions and that can be used like in R or uh, using C. Um, and uh, this is just one uh, of the algorithms that are extended. So, for example, here in Rothla, they have developed some uh, versions of other measures for uh, social network analysis, like centrality measures that consider, for example, uh, the number of connections on different layers. And in other parts of the world, they have done other measures. We have done also others. So, uh, the, what we are trying to do now is to collect uh, these basic measures and also analysis algorithms like community detection algorithms. There are already many working on multiple networks and uh, so provide a basic starting interface. So the answer is if you want the code, yes, it's available, mm -hmm. but the plan now we are working towards uh, you know, uh, developing a, 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 some kind of library. And we are probably also uh, writing a book of this uh, with some colleagues in sociology and physics uh, for Cambridge uh, Academy Press. And uh, the vision, to, like the, the objective there would be to have this code ready so that like it's uh, we, we can in the book like use it as a like to make examples and show things but this is like a one year or one year and a half uh, term project so yeah mm -hmm. one more yeah sorry do you want to come here so like people can see in the video your yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so the have you tried uh, <laughs> <laughs> have you tried to apply in real life, like uh, to, to calculate the distance on real data and what are possible areas to apply and what's for? Yeah, so uh, these, uh, these examples here, Sorry. well, okay. Great to present nice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, these examples here, uh, the real ones, even if I use the video or whatever, were real data, and so it's not uh, a real application, the same, it's just real data. But all these analyses were done by sociologists. So it's not that just we, did the we implemented the algorithms and we ran the algorithm ourselves and we said, oh, we like that. But uh, we asked feedback from that. And we said, so try on this specific context. And uh, the feedback that we got, uh, both with respect to this algorithm, to this measure and other centrality measures, is that uh, uh, like, uh, this is uh, potentially very valuable. Uh, because really, uh, for like uh, a person doing so social analysis, social scientist, uh, social scientist, uh, when you go there and you get three or four or numbers, uh, they have troubles. When you start saying, "Look, this person has a very is very important when you consider these three networks, and not on these uh, network that concerns working relationships," this is something that for them is extremely important. Because they can start understanding that the role of the person is a complex social environment. 
And also this is, this, the distances seem to be very complicated because they can say, oh look, I can see that the role of this guy is uh, related to these uh, specific kinds of relationships but not the others. Uh, still, uh, of course, uh, like this is like recent work, one year ago, so we don't have, uh, I would say, real applications, meaning people that have been there taking data like from online systems uh, and trying to like do some business about that. So we have no clear clue on how this could be used to, uh, to do something that is also like then something following, an objective, uh, an impact. Uh, but the thing is that at this level, so just providing new theoretical measures, um, they are much better appreciated from people that really want to do analysis and understand just how things are working. So I would say very much work in progress, <coughs> but uh, we can see that there are promising uh, feedbacks. Thank you. I believe I'm in a similar situation, so <laughs> yes, still looking for some yeah. possible areas to apply. Yeah, but the thing is that these are basic measures, so like it's the kind of research that uh, in some way wants uh, programmatically to start uh, without putting too many constraints on the application so that you can develop some measures that are general enough. This is how we started with all those other measures for original social network analysis, no? Uh, so it's in some way important that first we have a good definition, we have properties, we have scalability issues, uh, you know how long it takes to compute that. And then when everything is in place, we have the mathematical properties, then uh, you start going with the wild uh, and see like uh, what people can get out of it. Mm -hmm. In some ways, uh, like we are first like preparing the hammer and then you give it to people and you say, now use it and, and see what's happening. It's not the only way to, to proceed. Some people might even say that it's not the best one, uh, but it's, I think, a way that could lead to Thank something. You. Yeah? We have another question. So, uh, did you work on undirected and weighted networks? What sort of networks were there? Uh, you mean uh, for the case of distances? Uh, yeah, just the representation of the network that you use. Okay, so uh, that specific network was uh, uh, unweighted. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, uh, undirected. Even though from the original data, uh, so there was a simplification, because from the original data we could get some weights on that. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in the co publication network, we could count the number of uh, papers in co. So, uh, this has been done on unweighted networks. Uh, the thing is that uh, the measure can still uh, uh, be defined in exactly the same way. If you use uh, weights, because just instead of counting one, it counts uh, 3.3. Uh, the thing is that uh, if you use weights, uh, or even if you don't use them because they are hidden, you have anyway some kind of assumption there that uh, like uh, all the weights inside a single graph are comparable. Mm -hmm. uh, because then when you say that this path is longer because uh, it took two steps uh, instead of one, then you need this strong assumption that these two steps there in this part of the network are longer than one single step on this other part of the network. Otherwise you assume that they are equal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course, uh, what I can say is that, of course, this is the assumption that we have anyway in the single network analysis, but uh, it might not be so, yeah. so true in reality. I'm, I'm asking, really, because what we did recently was uh, we looked at different networks, at different data sets, really, mm -hmm. and we extracted four different networks, right? So unweighted, undirected, and so on, so we yeah. have like four of them. And we did, did the analysis, and it turned out actually that you get really different results yeah. when you have different representation of the network. So it is a little bit tricky when it comes to the analysis, right? Uh -huh. so yeah. What sort of uh, representation mm -hmm. you should be used to in terms of what what you really want to achieve? Yeah. Your, your yeah. The, the only difference that we have uh, experienced a little bit uh, is in the scalability tests. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of course if you use the directly network and directly network yes. you have much more possible mm -hmm. ways so that uh, but from a qualitative point of view we haven't really mm -hmm. um, checked that. So especially the directed undirected thing because sometimes you don't have really the shortest path, right? You take the direct Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. yeah. And the, the other thing is that uh, uh, like uh, normally the fact that the network is undirected is also associated with a kind of uh, like a following relationship that may not need uh, 
the existence of the reciprocity. Mm -hmm. And this has a strong impact on the hub structure of the network because, like uh, in some way on Twitter, you might expect that it's much uh, easier to have big hubs because you don't have to ask. Uh, mm -hmm. In Facebook, you can have hubs, but uh, you have you know, to reciprocate them. So, if yes. you just take accounts, like the if it is a power law, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> but let's not go into that. But you know, the, the experience can be quite different, mm -hmm. and also this, of course, can have an impact. But this is not really the same thing that you were asking. So it's it was yeah, just an additional comment. But yeah, but, but you're right also. So we uh, quite often assume that the network has some sort of structure, so it follows some sort of model. Yeah. Really also, important. also the last things uh, on uh, uh, this uh, like. Uh, Evolution of network that I think this is really, really an interesting and very good topic. Uh, and um, a lot of physicists have um, been working on that uh, mostly. And I think that also here, like people have been working, including our scouts, so no exception, no excuse, have been working by just assuming that we know we have a model for a revolution of single network and then showing what happens when we have interactive networks evolving in that model. And we show that, for example, then if you get power law structure here, this is inherited up to some uh, constant or probability threshold, this kind of studies, no? And the point is that, of course, like everyone here is using now the Barabati Albert model because it's uh, easy to understand, it's mathematically uh, easy to, uh, less complicated to, to, to deal with. But of course, it's the model that we know is, doesn't correspond to, I mean, it's just a very far approximation to like our real social network and not like citation network work. Mm -hmm. And so like uh, it's interesting that things are going on there, but in time we really need to get more towards the, the like the real data mm -hmm. and see what happens there. And the general uh, like uh, thing that of course everyone expects is then we will see that like the models like can give some general idea of the general laws but then the single applications mm -hmm. will be like we show a variety of, uh, of behaviors and results. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of thing that we have from physics, right? So, so in physics, all the particles are the same. Yeah. And when it comes to social networks, really, it's, it's the main thing is that the laws are labeled. So. Yeah, yeah. It, I yeah. mean, we got uh, very relevant uh, insights from physics, I think, so the idea of having, anyway, the ability with the abstractions to give you the general governing laws. So that's, mm -hmm. that's very interesting. Sure. But uh, for sure, like uh, especially me working with the uh, not the physicists, but also mm -hmm. having been work a lot with uh, social scientists, uh, like these two worlds are very far from being uh, like merged. And, uh, and I think it is also like in my mind at least that uh, this distance is also an attempt to go there. So with this kind of distance, we can still compute uh, some kind of uh, you know small world uh, effects uh, or distributions. But still, the, 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 like the sociologists can say, oh, but at least I can see that you're talking of working and then lunch together and, and hanging out. Mm -hmm. So it's an attempt to go there in the middle somewhere. But, yeah. So have you just the last comment. Have you heard about the lasagna project? Yeah. Do you take part in it? Yeah. Uh, no, um, but uh, I was at ACCS a uh, couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. presenting, uh, by the way, this distancing thing uh, in uh, the the session that uh, was organized by Lasagne, Multiplex uh, and uh, uh, Plexman. Mm -hmm. I must say that uh, there are many physicists. Yes. <laughs> and uh, it's very nice what they're doing, but uh, if I can say something, then, then, like, it's not a criticism, but I, uh, I mean, I dis I'm discussing with them, so like many are uh, colleagues. Uh, the two things uh, that they are missing, uh, maybe on purpose, because they want to focus on something else, is uh, the historical rules. Mm -hmm. So in some way they are developing a new, many new things, but like social network analysis, no multiplexity was there 30 years ago, and it's like social studies has been there for decades before, so they are missing a little bit that path, sometimes because they are not interested, and uh, yes, and they are missing what you mentioned. So you just put notes there, and then you, you know something, but you don't really know what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks once again. Thank you very much.
for the invitation. <coughs> so Mattel will have another presentation today. So